Hi, I'm Mike with Utastic here again at SCNA. I'm sitting down with Sarah Allen and Desi McAdam. They created uh, the RailsBridge Workshop, which is, well, I'll let you describe what exactly is the RailsBridge Workshop. So RailsBridge is a broad organization that was started by a number of Rails developers mm -hmm. who really wanted to create the kind of community that they wanted to be a part of. Sarah May and myself started um, what's, so as the RailsBridge project, it's the RailsBridge Open Workshops. And um, specifically in San Francisco, we used the Open Workshop formula to create outreach workshops to women. Mm -hmm. And the idea is we're using open source practices to apply to event organization okay. and outreach projects. So the the what we call recipes or cookbook right. for creating the event as well as the curricula are all open source and okay. freely available for anybody to use for anything. And then Desi has happened to be traveling all over the world and <laughs> has created um, instances of these workshops okay. wherever she's been as well as dozens or l many, many other Volunteers so have done that all over the country. What's the, the format? What is what is it? Well, the current because you said it's a, it's an open source thing, so it, I'm sure there's some evolution. What is the current format of a? So the core format is a Friday night Saturday event, mm -hmm. where on Friday all of the installation occurs. So you have volunteers who come and help people get their machines set up. Um, because that is often the most difficult part for beginners, and it really has nothing to do with the you know writing code or yeah. doing it can be a wall. You the can particular like, technology. Or get Ruby on my computer. Boom. I yeah, I mean, particularly Rails is so many collections of open source packages, and it's particularly hard on you know, and it's different for each machine you're on. Once you've got Ruby and Rails installed, it's easy, and then it's different for the different technologies. And in fact, there's now a front end workshop that doesn't have a evening install fest because everybody has a browser and a right. text editor. And that's yeah, that's easy. yeah, that one's. Um, but, um, but for the Rails workshop, that is really an important step. And then Saturday is um, everybody follows the same curricula, and you have at least two groups. One is for people who've never written code before, and the other is for um, you know whatever degree of Maybe they already hit Java, but they never did Rails. Exactly. So uh, sometimes we'll find that people who are sysadmins mm -hmm. are faster learning Rails than experienced programmers who maybe have done desktop applications but aren't very familiar with the command line. So your level of experience as a coder doesn't necessarily correlate to how fast you'll learn the very first steps yeah. of Rails. So you might have predisposed towards, oh, this is how we do it on the desktop, whereas somebody who's maybe had some scripting experience doesn't have maybe as rigorous uh, uh, a mindset on Oh yeah, it has to be this way. Yeah, because you'll have different learning curves for people who've done web apps, so they understand HTTP, versus people who've done C++, therefore they understand object-oriented programming, right. versus um, people who've done a lot of command line stuff, and so they're very facile with the scripting aspects of it. So we try to group people into like-minded experience, but mostly it's depending on the size of the workshop, um, the the grouping is flexible right. depending on the venue and the size and the number of volunteers and teachers you have and sometimes it's just everybody's in a room and we figure it out. Yeah. And does you you or you wanted to say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say in addition to that, so like typically I try to um, I try to group people based on uh, very broad generalizations. So I've uh, I've programmed before, I've never programmed before or I've done some Rails but I need some more help with, you know, more advanced concepts. Right. And then split the people apart and try to get the TAs that match sort of those like comfort levels of teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you said you, you've gone all over the world and, and done these all over. I'm just curious, I like all I mean literally like where where when when you say world, where what do you mean? Well so I've I've done them so I've done one uh, I've done quite a few in the United States and mm -hmm. I've done uh, one in Singapore and I've I've helped out with one in, in Chile, um, and I can't remember everybody's. But the, the it's 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 really easy to yeah. once you've seen one run, and you have a desire to do them. It's really not very difficult if you you know ping the mailing list. Everybody will tell you what the latest you know. We just ran one last weekend, and this is what we ran into. We've already done pull requests to update the documentation, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So everybody's super helpful. 
Yeah. And there's a, some really nice side effects that come from that. Um, a lot of people who don't really know anything about the workshops go to our instructions for how to install Rails because you know a new version of this or that comes out right. and the install instructions change. But because now there are workshops happening several times a month in lots of different places, um, those those are updated by the volunteers and they're different volunteers every time, so it isn't as much. So it's of a also burden. kind of becoming a documentation unto itself, not just a script for how to do these these classes, but also, hey, I just need to set up Rails. How do I do yes. Yeah, there's a lot of different things that come out of it, and you know, educational resources and set up resources and different things. Um, so that I, that's a pretty neat side effect of yeah. the community. And, and I do want to ask about the social aspect. Uh, the way I understand is, uh, the, the legend is uh, that Sarah Ellen and Sarah May were at a conference and they didn't see a lot of other women. They, you realized that you were the only two women in, in hundreds of people and you wanted to create something that would help bring... Um, yeah, so the, the stats are there, we were at um, a conference where there were 200 people and six women. Mm -hmm. So that's um, 3%, which um, is re reflective of, or is it 2%? Well, in any case, it's around the number of women in open source, mm -hmm. um, which is much, much smaller than the number of women in the corporate world doing programming. And I came more from um, companies right. which, were, um, which were less involved with open source, where I felt that there were not very many women, but right. there were more women yeah. than I saw in the Ruby community. And I'd been meaning to learn Ruby for three years mm -hmm. before... I had started learning Ruby in 2008, right. and so I thought, and I still believe it's true, that there are more women programmers in the Bay Area than there are Ruby programmers. Really? Therefore, if there's 20% of programmers are women, overall, Why aren't statistically, of Ruby developers? No, it's it's actually more. We have a bigger opportunity than oh, that. Oh, okay. Because Ruby is a small language, so therefore. If we just convert some of the existing programmers to no Ruby, right. then it would be easy to get, actually get 50%. But and does. in any of the new languages, I think we have a real big opportunity to do that. Because in any specific community, we can change the ratio much easier because it's smaller than just you know, the boil in the ocean problem. And I also heard that in the startups, it's also a, 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 a boys club culture as well. And uh, with Jenny, I did an interview with Jenny a few um, uh, months ago. And she described it as when a startup happens, it's usually some friends that get together and they start the startup and then they hire people like them from their own network. Um, is that something that you've, you've seen in the startup world where it's, it tends to be male dominated companies? Just Well, statistically, um, tech founders are two to three percent women. And I think that a lot of that, there is a culture in the United States that is um, where men have the de networks and men see the those kind of opportunities as available to them for whatever reason. But I do think that the social dynamics of creating situations where women and men and people of all colors and creeds can get together and learn together, then we forge those networks where by example, people see that what you happen to look like, the words you use, your background, doesn't dictate that you are more or less capable mm -hmm. of doing these technical things. And, um, and when somebody walks into a, a Railsbridge workshop, they can't tell by looking at somebody whether they're an expert programmer or very successful in their career or unemployed and all of these things are not correlated with each other and they're not correlated with how to look and so um, so that's really exciting to me that I hope it will bring that change broadly but in any case we are seeing it as absolutely making those changes in pockets right. and I think that we need to overcome this problem one person at a time Planting one mentor at a time. all over so that we eventually these communities can well, I think that we're talking about you know, changing the ratio is a boil in the ocean kind of problem. However, <clears throat> since we've proven that this template can be um, fairly easily reproduced mm -hmm. by anyone, 
Um, I like to think that we can boil the ocean by making every tenth molecule a heater. <laughs> okay, so, so, but basically planting the seeds so that way it can at least distribute these ideas beyond a small community and, and basically... Sp- yeah, like, and like we're seeing this out. happen in Ruby, JavaScript, Python, Python Scala. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, so are all of these uh, Rails bridge, well, Rails bridges by definition Rails oriented, but have you done these for... Well, non- Rails bridge was created the name Rails was a little controversial when we were naming it, but we felt that it was coming out of Rails developers. But the Teaching Kids project has always taught, has never taught Rails. Right. Yes. Um, however, the um, Python folks felt like it, it would alienate their community to call it Rails Bridge. Rails Bridge. So they called it Pi Star because there was okay. already a Pi Bridge something. Um, but now we're creating an umbrella organization that will be able to support all of these different... Okay, so that way you don't have the bias that, well, I don't want to do that, I don't like Rails. It's, yeah. do, do you have a, well, I won't make you say the name now because I'm sure it might change, but uh, but but it's recognizing the fact that we're, we're software developers, yeah, not Rails. Yeah, and I think most general. of us um, are doing Rails right now. Right. And right five now, years from now, we'll be doing yeah. something else. Yeah, right now being the operative word there. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it Everything change. changes. And, uh, um, with with going into a conference and, and have you have you been seeing uh, since you've started doing this more women at conferences and more diversity? I mean, SCNA I think is an I excellent have. conference. Uh, I've noticed that. a big difference actually. Yeah, and I think that part of it is that the women in the some women in the community who weren't coming out to events because they felt alienated have started to come out more, and then the um, new people in the community have connections to people already in the community. The other thing that has happened in parallel is a lot of the event organizers have realized that they need to take um, initiative to change how they ask for speakers to create a diversity amongst speakers, and if we have more women speakers, then it's less alienating to um, have for women to come to the event, they they feel like there are role models and mentors for them, and it's easier to look at a group of twenty people. And if you see yourself represented, right. then you feel like, hey, that could be me. And uh, recently, I, I learned about a picture that was uh, uh, very popular in the Obama administration of when Obama first took office. He was meeting with some some people, and there were some children there. I'm not exactly sure the context why they were there. But one of the little boys, he was black, and he just said very quietly, he said, he asked this question, they couldn't hear what he said, and they asked him to speak up, and he said, I, wanna, I just wanna know if your hair feels like mine. And, and there, the, the photographer got this amazing picture that was very candid, and it was the president leaning down and this little boy touching his head. And what, what was so inspiring about that is that it was, here's this generation now seeing somebody like them in in a position of, of authority and responsibility. And, and are, are you saying that seeing women speaking and running these conferences, running these organizations, says to the women, there's people like you doing this? Yeah, I think that there is this myth in our industry that there are no women. Right. That somehow women are less interested or less capable because as evidenced by there being so few. Mm-hmm. And I've talked to women who've been the only woman in their company, and then they start to say, well, that's just the way the industry is, Mm -hmm. and especially if you've been through two jobs like that. But the truth is, numbers-wise, there's tons of amazing technical women in our field. And the fact that historically we haven't seen them at conferences is a cultural artifact that is not related to their lack of existence. Mm -hmm. And so by creating diversity, and I think we don't have an, we don't only have a gender diversity problem, we have diversity along many angles problem, but I think that the more that we create, um, we find these people, Mm -hmm. these people who are doing technically amazing work, and they've been in the industry for 5, 10, 20 years, and we celebrate their success, (coughs) the more that we draw in people, and and nobody should say, oh, I can't see anybody who looks like me, 
I don't belong here. Right. I mean, the dream of technology is that it's a meritocracy, that it's a great equalizer, and it's just a terrible thing that that's not actually happening. Right. And so that's what we're really trying to change. Anybody who says that women can't code never met great or never read about Grace Hopper, <laughs> I, you know, it's 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 to me it's, it's utterly ridiculous. But I do want to thank you again for sitting down with me and the work you're doing with the Rails Bridge Outreach. Thanks. Thank you.